Okay. Then let's discuss about the other three important that is access dot log. Then we have request dot log, and then there is audit dot log. These three are pretty important. Two. to do any security check and to do any performance check like if you want okay the performance is not good and you wanted to see which all pages are consuming how much time plus any security related any threat related that okay which user access which instance at which time and from where all those also information can be accessed through access audit and request log so let's firstly let discuss about the performance let us say that you get a scenario that okay some of the pages are consuming a lot of time and you are getting regular spikes because of those pages now to know which all pages are are causing performance uh, causing performance issue or hampering the performance is the first thing that you will do is you will go inside the request dot log remember request dot log gives you the information about the performance it's not that okay it's it will say the performance is good or not but it gives you the time taken by each request to serve a page so any page that is requested will be served and the information for that will be logged inside the request dot log so here if you see that there are so many requests multiple so many requests and like you can see and here it says see, this is the time date and time and this inside the packet is pretty important that helps you identify each and everything so this is my thread id so my thread id is 10882 what you best do is you double click this so here you can see this is the request for this and this is the response so what it said is because through arrow only it is indicated so it says when the request is made it was a get type of request and the request was made to this url and it was then served to us the important thing is that i match the thread id so here in the thread id i said okay it is returned back with a 200 response and the response type is this and the important thing is how much time it took to serve that request okay so performance related things any any performance that okay which page consumes how much time so here you can give the request and the response like this is the request and this is the response so when the response came it was okay 200 that's pretty good because you get a 200 and it took 3 seconds to return the response sorry one more time again and that's in the packet what was that that is thread id thread id so every request that comes would have a thread number you go you go inside some uh, hospital or somewhere you get a token id so similarly when a request comes it gets a thread id that okay okay it it it, it is being given a thread to execute or to run on our server now every thread that will get started would have a unique id so this is the thread id to know so okay, what was the request and what was the response so here here the request was being made and here the response is returned with 200 and all that okay yes you can ask questions if you have any uh no so okay. okay so this was my request dot log which helps you identify the the performance the next is the audit okay audit is empty that's pretty strange okay i will check why is it empty okay let's firstly discuss about this we have the access dot log so if i open the access dot log it actually gives you the information about the end user who is accessing the page and whether it's a security constraint plus uh is it necessary like uh, to come on even uh, sorry it is Sorry. Ah, uh, so this was request dot log. 
and then inside the access dot log so from which user the request is coming and it gives all the information about what time the request is being made and uh, the user type the date time the ip details of the end user everything is being logged inside the with respect to end user like if you have to see that okay some some malicious user is trying to access your website so you wanted to know the ip and the details of that user so that all those details can be would be logged inside the access log so you can see the ip since i am using so that is it is giving local host i always log in with admin and this is the date when i like perform some 23rd may and like i made a get request all these things get logged over here everything get logged over here this is my access dot log so if you wanted to know which user perform which operation on like like which path all those things can be like all the security checks can be done from here any malicious user is hitting your site that you can get to know from access dot log okay yeah. we discussed about access request and there was one another okay these two so system error get so see when these two are used when your server is starting up and stopping down so when your server is starting up and any error occur then it will go then it will be logged with that std error so std error should always be empty during your startup if it's full it if it is filled then it will that there is some issue so here you can see why is it my system error has some information because it says insufficient heap memory and also available memory below specified limit and low memory action so that is why to give this warning there are there are logs that get printed in say system error and rest all the basic informational log like here i started my aem instance and all these logs informational logs that that get printed in the command prompt also get logged inside system output log so system output log has all the basic logs when a server get started so all those logs are stored inside system log plus system error has all the error any error during startup all those logs get printed over here okay okay now this was the basic information so the other important thing is here you can see like access dot log has okay so this was published so why we are okay let's go and see inside the author one so here i am inside the author so if i go inside the access okay this is the audit okay so history dot log this history is also pretty important history log actually tell which user performed what type of operation and on which page so here you can see since i logged in as the admin and i performed view operation on this particular page at this time now let me do one thing let me create a new page by the name new test page so that information will also be logged over here so if i op if i go to this and if i create a new page over here is at the sample project this yen and let me okay let me delete this okay this experience fragment page let me delete this page so if i will delete this so the same information get logged in that the history dot log so if i open this you will see yes so here you can see this information gets logged over here i deleted this thing so that is how that is why this reload it yeah if i if i make any changes like let me just create a new page over here let me name it as new test page so that information will also get logged over here new test page okay and let me just create it open it and if i open my page yeah, you can see it's reloading and you can see i edited and this is the page and it gave me all the information 
okay so someone accidentally delete or modify anything and you want to backtrack the best is that you can go inside the history dot log to find any malicious user activities you can go inside access dot log to for performance perspective you can go inside request dot log plus system error and system output any questions any any queries on this of how you would find which particular type of log files would have which particular type of information mm. uh, so if say i want to uh, figure out that uh, who's activated or deactivated some of the pages uh, so those are operational related so those information will go inside error log only. okay uh, i will i will uh, give the user as a well, right the username who did what so uh, so what you said come again sorry i mean in the in this one it would uh, give us the username as well right like who did what like who deactivated the page that, that information either you get it from access access dot log or history dot log so if you want to get the information regarding related to which user performed which type of work that can be seen from history and if you want to see more inside detail like which user from which ip performed action on which page and all those things like from where the request came all those things can be seen over here access.log like if i open this access.log you would see a lot of information let me just open this again access dot log yeah so here you can see that okay this is the uh, this is the user admin at this particular time the request came it was a get request to this url and it was an http request the response was 200 i don't know what is this 103 and the request was made over here from which browser the request was being made the windows everything everything get logged over here so any malicious activity you want to find out from a, for any script or for any user you can find it from the access dot log history logs tells you okay what action is being performed on the on the content by which particular user like okay, someone accidentally deleted any page or modified any content, and you wanted to find out who was that user who performed the modification, then use history dot log. Access dot log is for malicious activities. Okay. Questions? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, if I go so inside my system console, config manager, configuration manager, if you remember, so not system console, and here, here you can see below sling, you have a link that is log support. So here you can go inside the log support, and here also you can see all the logs. Like here you can see the error log, audit log, request log, access, all the logs you can see. Over here, like, like, let me open the history log. So, if I open the history log, you can see the logs that were there inside the notepad are also printed over here. Like, these three lines are also over here as well. But it is not a good way to see or to analyze the logs by going over here because it will create the load on your AEM server only. So better is that you see the logs from the CRX pack manager, logs, and then which type of log file you want to see. So in the side, the CRX folder again, and then inside the logs, you have all the necessary logs. And there is a backup of each and every log that has been kept for the last, I think, seven days, six, seven. That also is a configuration that we can update on fly. If we want to change like this, uh, the old, uh, the previous uh, log file name and how long you want to keep this file, these are all configured. Okay. Questions, doubts? 
Fine, so far, okay. See, mainly from application perspective, you how your application is running, any error in the application, it's of course error.log. Mm -hmm. Any performance related, it's it's request.log. Any access related that okay, which user performed, which operation or which type of node, then it's audit.log. And uh, of course, uh, audit history access and uh, yeah, then request STD error and STD system output error and system output like uh, uh, error and system output. Yeah, both of these two also when an error occurs during startup of server and the normal log that gets printed during a game startup. Okay. 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 One more thing I would tell you today. Uh, okay. Now, see, error dot log contains all your application specific log plus all the AEM logic or AEM application related logs as well. So everything application related whether it's your or whether the adobe adobe aem application all those logs that printed inside error dot log agreed mm -hmm. yes now consider a situation that you are working on a complex requirement which has some complex java file to be written and you are working on that and then you deploy it, then you plan to deploy it but all your that application logs would also be Printed inside the this error dot log only, so it becomes sometimes very very difficult to find out your specific log. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is AEM also provide a functionality where you can create your custom log file by using that custom log file. All the logs specific to your application only. When I'm saying only related to your application only will be logged inside that custom log. So mm -hmm. That makes the thing easier for the developer to analyze their logs because the logs will not contain any other information except your logs. Okay. Let me show you how you create the custom log file. So if I go inside the system console config manager so, if you're working on a complex requirement, all the logs need to get logged inside that file. So, it becomes easy to identify. So, if I go and search for logging, logger configuration. So, here you can see all the configuration for all the type of log files. These are all the configuration. Like it says logger.access, logger.audit, audit log, logger.error. So, what all are the error files that are being shown over here? is that the log files are actually configured over here. Got my point? Yes. Okay. Now, if you wanted to create your custom log and let's say, what is your custom files? Your custom files are stored below the forms sample core because you created all your Java files below this folder. Am I right? Yes. What we will do is we will go inside this Apache link logging logger configuration and click on this plus. And here you can see it gives us this dialog. It says what type of logs will get printed, whether information, whether debug, and what type of logs. So I said debug. And here you can give the name of your log file. So I said inside the log, it's sample minus error.log. Okay, so I said, I will tell you about this log level. Uh, what is the purpose of this? But here, inside the log file, we said the, the name of the file wherever logs will be printed or will be inputted. And also, there is an, this logger folder. This logger folder actually tells on which, um, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, on which package or for which files your log should get printed inside the custom log. So this custom log would only print the Java files which will be presented below this package. So what is our package? Our package is 
uh, as we know all our java files are stored below the com sample core so this is a package where all of below which all our java files are stored so in the logger i will provide my package name and all the java files below this will be stored over uh, inside this sample error dot log so if i save it see what name i gave is sample error dot log now if you will see inside the logs there is no such file sample okay yeah. but the time i will save it the time i will save it and you can see in a minute you can see the sample error gets created see the yeah. time i save it the sample error gets created and the size is zero mm -hmm. okay yeah. now all the custom logs any custom log so how will you print the custom logs is like logging let me just show it to you close other let me just why why do i write it let me just copy it from somewhere so here i have the sample configuration yeah so if i go over here inside inside over here but let me go inside some filters okay logging filter okay this is our logging filter just a minute okay let me just copy it from here inside the scheduler let me sorry yeah let me just scroll yeah okay so here we created the object of our logger the same is what we are going to create over in our any of our file like let me create it inside the service so here this is my service and i created the object of my logger over here okay and now how you can print the logs is, so it by aem makes the use of slf 4j library to print the logs so you can print either info log either warning debug or then there is uh Uh, info warning debug yeah there is one more i will tell you so here if i i will show it to you now even like here if i go inside this get full name or get the url what i will do is i will sorry i will use the logger dot so here you can see debug either you can print debug you can print error type of log you can print info type of log or trace also trace and warning so if i wanted to print debug log so if you remember the log file that we created was what was the name logging logger so over here we created our this as our custom log and we and what we did is we gave the log level as debug okay so so here what i'm saying is since the level is debug so it means our java file would have if any debug log that will be printed and info warning error so all these type of logs till debug will be printed because it's a log level okay since it's a log level and if i selected it as debug then all the debug informational error and warning message will be printed and not trace because if the log level is information then the logs of type information warning and error only will be printed okay So if I use this as debug, and here in my code, if I say logger dot debug, and whatever you wanted to say, inside debug of get user details. Okay. Similarly, let's print the other ones as well. So, so what type of logs are there? here if we can see one is debug then we have info warning error let me make let me make it as trace okay so trace debug then info then warning and what was the last one it was the last one error okay so this way you can use different log levels to print different type of log So log level has its purpose like debug, info, warning, error message. You will also 
printed inside it try catch exception block if some exception occurs then only you will use that trace this logger dot error okay now if i will deploy this code i it's debug it's trace so let's say inside trace it's debug it's info inside info inside warning inside warning inside error inside error okay and now let's do okay so what i did is i created this custom log file so that all my application specific how did i made it as application specific by using this logger property i are you able to follow me or i am going a bit fast no it's okay yeah. okay yes to print your custom print your logs files related to your custom application you use this package name inside the logger property mm -hmm. and here we give the name of our custom file and then this is a log level which says what tall type of logs that you want to print inside your log file and this is how we print or we display logs whatever like here debug will be used in case we want to debug application error will be used of course inside the catch block warning will be used like basically is see you can use any any type of log at any place but there is a proper place to use a particular type of log level like of course if you use the logger dot error inside any simple start of method of course it doesn't make any sense it will it will give wrong information to mm -hmm. some other developer who will be reviewing the logs mm -hmm. okay similarly info log will be print like at normal when method start and method ends debug log are being used when you want to debug some application if, deb if application is failing and you want it to debug where exactly is it failing okay always on prod instance it is being said that you set your log level to info okay and no above it not and not above it because if you set the info log level then all the info and warning and error logs are printed but not debug and trace mm. okay so on prod always remember you should set your log level as info so our code i think it's bill let's just see what was the name of our method we we'll get url details let me just refresh my this uh, uh where is my page this page yeah, okay so if i will refresh my this page just refresh of course i know it has this component which is calling my model and my model is calling my service where my logs are getting printed so if i open the logs and it is still empty yeah here you can see the sample error has some text because it has some size so here let's see if my these errors are being printed now since my log level what is my log level log level was debug so this log should not be printed but this trace one should not be printed but all these four should be printed do you agree with me yes so if i copy this and search it inside the log file yeah you can see it's over here It's yeah. over here. Then, then the next one. This was debug of user details. Okay, let me just copy this. Print this. This is debug. This is info. This is warning. This is error. But there is no trace. And also, you can see this type is debug. The type is info over here. The type is warning. And, yeah. is error. and now, see at runtime. Sometime on prod, if you are getting some error, and on prod we we always know that the log level should be information. But if you wanted to see other type of logs as well, just just at that time just change the log level to some other 
and save and immediately you would be able to see your trace logs as well like if i do this and if i go to the bottom let me, let me just hide this I think I have to refresh it. I missed to refresh. Yeah. Let me just open and close my my dialog. Hide this. Yeah. Yeah. So here, here you can see the trace logs have now also been printed. Yes. Because I changed my log level. <laughs> yeah. So by setting the suitable log level, those and the logs below that will be printed. Logging logger. So here I have this. And what I did is I made my custom error log, my log file sample error and what I said is that all the Java files below this package, the logs for all those files should get printed inside my this particular file. So it becomes easy that okay, it will not go inside the error.log but it will come separately inside this log file. So it becomes easy for the developer to check the logs and the logs doesn't get mixed with the other log, other functionality logs. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Okay. And how would you use logs in your code? Just use the SLF4J library, the one that we used over here. So if you see over here, it is an SLF4J, ORG SLF4J library. Mm -hmm. Just create the instance, uh, this variable, and use the different type of logs methods, whether trace, debug, info, warning, error. Error, of course, we use instead the catch. Warning is being used. See, warning, when do you think warning will be used? Warning will be used some when some API has been deprecated and you know that the API is deprecated, you, you like your, your custom code is deprecated or is like out of scope code, but you do not want to delete it. So you can print a logger.warning. So mm -hmm. when some other developer will come and see this type of log, warning log in the log, so you will be able to know that, okay, as of now it's okay, but I have to, upgrade this code because this is a warning because this is a warning and any time in the future it can get converted into error okay but this can cause issues info log is simple like starting of the method ending some basic information like info log mm -hmm. debug basically is printed in, at a lot of places to to debug where if if your application is failing, maybe you you best is you put the debug logs at multiple location, and that way you can get to know what is the value coming. And on production, we always set the log level as info and not debug because we use a lot of debug logs inside our code. Only in case if something is is breaking in the middle or production, then just quietly change the log level to debug because if you change all always set the log level to debug then a whole lot of logs will be printed on the production server and it will mm -hmm. reduce the size or it will take a lot of size on your <coughs> production server machine yeah. always keep the size to keep the size as less use the log level as info mm -hmm. Okay. So we discussed about firstly the different type of log files, the error log file, the history log, audit log, and request log, and system output and system error. What is the purpose of those? Under which circumstance do you should use which one? Okay. Now, the most important one was the error one because all the application-related logs get printed over there. But if you want your application, your specific application should log should get printed in a separate log file, create a custom logging logger configuration. Okay? Yeah. 
Any questions, any doubts? Uh, so far, okay. 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 Um, I think it's enough for today. Okay. Uh, Thank you so much. One last thing which I wanted to tell you was this, a very basic thing. If your application is failing, somewhere your code is failing, the first thing that you should do is you should go inside system console bundles and here you should see that all your bundles should be in active state. Here you can see one bundle is in installed state. That means that bundle would not be working and would have some issue. So here you can see this AEM modernized tool. Although it is an out of box or you can say some AEM, AEM utility, it is an installed state, but it means that the functionality that this AEM modernized tool provides will not be working on your current instance. So one thing you have to make sure that your bundles, your custom bundles and your out of box bundle, like your custom bundle was the sample one. So here the sample bundle should always be in active state. Mm -hmm. If it's not in active state, it means it is not working and there is some issue. The second important thing is if you go inside the configuration, here you have the third, this uh, component, the second option. So it gives you an information about all your services that you have created and tells you if your services are in active state or not. Like we created our sample service. So the sample service would be listed over here. And if I show you sample service, yeah, sample service and all the out of box service are listed over here. And always remember that your service again should be in active state. If it is not in active state, it means there is some issue. Like here you can see some out of box service, it's in satisfied state. So if it's in satisfied or unsatisfied state, it means your service is not working. So somewhere if you feel that, okay, your code is not working and mainly in your code, it is your service. Then go inside the system console components and here see if your service is in active state or not. Okay. And also if it is not in active state, then you can click over there and you can get more information why it is not in active. So here you can get some more information that, okay, activation has been delayed and it's enabled like you can you can maybe you can get some more information from here okay and still if you're not able to do get it then what you can do is you can try to start it like here it is in satisfied you can try to start it it is in the background it is getting started and in the error dot log see because it is an out of box Java AEM provided. So all the logs related to this will be printed inside error.log. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to print this, the logs for this in a separate log file, just copy this packet name, like this packet name, and create a separate error custom log files in the logging logger utility. So here you can at least go inside the error logs and try to see what exactly is breaking and why your this service is not getting started. Okay. Okay. One more thing. Most of the time, this also tends to be the issue is that you always after your deployment, when your multiple modules gets deployed is you always make sure you check after deployment that all your bundles, all your bundles, like here you can, you, your bundles get created in a categories form like here. So our mine one is inside the com.sample. So always make sure that all your bundles should be in installed state. Like if I click over here, it says reinstall. Like here it says, like here you can see it is in share. Mm -hmm. So it means it's in installed state. Mm -hmm. If some bundle is not in installed state, then it means that there is some issue and that thing will not be working properly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So another troubleshoot.